Good evening, Robert Scribbler. It is October 29th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. For this particular video, I am going to be talking about coral bleaching, in particular threats to the Great Barrier Reef of Australia, which is the world's largest contiguous reef system, and which during recent years has seen back-to-back -back major coral bleaching events, including in the years 2016 and 2017, following a very powerful El Nino event in the equatorial Pacific Ocean, but also following a long-term period in which the oceans have been warming, and this ocean warming is driven primarily by fossil fuel burning and human-based greenhouse gas emissions, which are warming up the Earth system as a whole. I'd like to call your attention to some statements by Terry Hughes, who is one of the world's most uh, recognized experts on the Great Bar Barrier Reef. And Terry Hughes notes that scientists can scare scarcely keep up with the rapid decline of the Great Barrier Reef. Our results from 2017 will be published very soon. 2018 data on coral recruitment is still in review. We're on standby now for another hectic field season. So what's happening right now is that as the Pacific Ocean is starting to enter an El Nino type state, uh, sea surfaces near Australia are again heating up. And we can see this in the Earth Null School map with sea surface temperature anomalies off Australia moving into a rather high range in the range of 0 0.5 degrees Celsius above normal to 3.2 degrees Celsius above normal. And what we are looking at is an indication that there is a high risk uh, or a, a significant risk that the Great Barrier Reef will experience yet another coral bleaching event. And I'd just like to point out that corals are, are one of the, the ecological systems on the earth that are, that are most vulnerable to human-caused climate change, not just from ocean warming, but also from rising levels of ocean acidification. And I just also like to point out that ever since about 20, 2015 and 2016, the globe has been experiencing much, much higher than normal levels of, of risk to corals. And these levels of risk and these alert levels ha have remained elevated in level two status pretty much ever since 2016 and have not gone down. So, so the risks to corals right now are high and they are rising. I'd also like to point out this statement by the Intergovernment Panel on Climate Change that, um, and, and just focusing in on, on risks to corals, and that corals are likely to, to decline by 70 to 90 percent with global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius, whereas virtually all corals 99% would be lost at 2 degrees Celsius warming. At present, we're about 1 to 1.2 degrees Celsius above 19th century averages, and, and we are looking at a deca decadal warming rate of around 0 0.2 degrees Celsius. So we are getting very close to the 1.5 degrees Celsius threshold, and, and we're not too far away from the two degrees Celsius threshold as well. And, and we're really getting into a period of time where we need to respond very rapidly to human-caused climate change if we are to save these corals and, and so many other things in the Earth system that so much of human industry and, and our appreciation of beauty rely upon. And, and, and you know, humans themselves are not divorced from the natural world. If we start losing systems that keep the ocean healthy like corals, then it will severely neg negatively affect us as well, which is all the more incentive to transition to clean energy and look for ways to, to further mitigate the impact that is coming from human-caused climate change. Now, I'd just like to, to point out a 
a graphic that is, is very disturbing. And this particular graphic is, is looking ahead at 2018 and showing the risk of coral bleaching rising in through the near Australian region and the Great Bar Barrier Reef, as well as in the Southern Pacific Ocean. Now, I just like to, I'm gonna go ahead and replay this a few times. The colors that you see represent uh, coral bleaching watches, warnings, a, a heightened alert level, which is alert level one, which means that coral bleaching is, is very likely, and the highest alert level, which is alert level two. Alert level one being uh, showing up in the orange and alert level two showing up in, in the red. And, and just look how widespread these alert levels one and two show up in this forecast model provided by NOAA's Coral Reef Watch running through January, February, and March of, of 2019. And this is the Southern Hemisphere summer, which is why we are seeing these these bleaching alerts starting to pop up. Now, this forecast is not a guarantee. It's not a guarantee that we're gonna see these uh, level one and level two alert, um, coral bleaching alerts over the Great Barrier Reef. We could see some upwelling from a cyclone, which uh, a tropical cyclone or a hurricane or a typhoon, which, which would, might provide some respite for the Great Barrier Reef and, and these other zones that in which corals could be impact, impacted, but there's there's no guarantee. And right now with temperature thresholds, new global record temperature thresholds um, being uh, set and, and challenged in, in, in recent years, and with a new El Nino emerging, which is the, the top of the natural variabilities spectrum, a, we, and we have a likelihood of a new El Nino emerging, then these corals are, are falling under threat yet again. And this is back to back to back impacts to corals, which is, which is a key system for, for ocean health, which is one of the keystones of ocean health. And we really, really need to be concerned about what's happening to the corals. And what's happening to corals is just one of many, many impacts of human-caused climate change, primarily driven by fossil fuel burning. And again, lending urgency to the, the necessity to rapidly transition to clean energy and to cut those carbon emissions as swiftly as we can. People who are, or particularly politicians who are not concerned about this are not paying attention. Those who are trying to silence the scientists are doing something that is very wrong and, and we need to support the scientists, scientists like Terry Hughes and others who are our experts and our luminaries on this issue. So again, Unfortunately, more threats to the Great Barrier Reef. Let's hope they do not emerge. And I encourage you to follow Terry Hughes and to listen what he has to say on this vital issue. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.